Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at this really awesome little console-sized gaming PC that I picked up on AliExpress. Now, a few months ago I actually did a review on a very similar PC, and when I ordered this one, the description said that this was going to come in the black case with a little bit of RGB on the top, but unfortunately when I unboxed it, it was basically the same case. Now, don't worry because the specs are different inside. This is a bit more powerful. And I gotta say that this actually turned out to be a really nice little mini gaming PC. Given its form factor, it can definitely put out some power. Now what you're seeing on screen right now is Forza Horizon 4, 1080p Ultra settings, and we're getting an average of 71 FPS. This is more than playable for me. I wouldn't mind going down to high settings if I had to. But as you can see with this setup here, it can definitely handle it at 1080p Ultra settings. If you search online, you'll see these popping up everywhere. They're available in silver, black, and white, and like I mentioned, the one that I was supposed to get was supposed to be the black version with a little cutout on top and some RGB, but they did send over the silver version. I didn't want to have to ship it back and wait on that, so I figured we'd go ahead and take a look at it. You can pick these up in several different configurations, from a 7th gen i3 all the way up to a 9th gen i7, and I have seen some of these very similar with i9s, but... Given the form factor here and the cooler clearance, I wouldn't go with the i9. It's definitely going to thermal throttle. The one I have here came bare bones with just the CPU and the GPU. We have a 9th gen i5 9600K and a low profile GTX 1650. I added 1 terabyte M.2 SSD and 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. One thing that the manufacturer has upgraded, at least on this version here with the 9600K, is the cooler. The original cooler that came on it did a decent job on a 9400F, but I think this 9600K would have kind of struggled with that. And as you can see, this thing is absolutely tiny. I've already done some testing with it, and I can tell you right now that with the cooler they're using in this and that 9600K, it does work a lot better than the original cooler and the other one that I took a look at. This one's actually using an ID cooling IS-30. I've used this in a low-profile build in the past, and it actually works out really well. Four heat pipes, it's only 30 millimeters tall, and so far it's actually been doing an amazing job cooling down this 9600K. So the way this is set up is you can run it vertically, or you can lay it down flat on the desk. But as you can see, all of the air intakes are on the bottom, and it does get a bit hotter if you run it like this. So I would definitely suggest using this in the vertical position. It does come with two little feet that will attach right to the side of the case. And as for I.O., up front we have three USB 2.0 ports. I really wish these were upgraded to 3.0. Moving around back, we have our audio inputs and outputs, four USB 3.0 ports, gigabit Ethernet, our DCN, and we'll take a look at that power supply in a second, full-size display port, full-size HDMI, and DVI. Unfortunately, there is no USB Type-C port on this unit. The power supply is a bit heavier duty than the original one I looked at. That one came with a 180 watt power supply. Right here we have a 230 watt, which should be sufficient for the 9600K and that GTX 1650. By the end of this video, we'll take a look at total system power consumption, CPU heat, we're also going to be running some benchmarks, testing out some of our favorite PC games, and then we'll finally top it off with some emulation. I got a good feeling that this thing's going to handle the higher-end emulators really, really well. Alright, so what I have here is Windows 10 Pro running from that 1TB M.2 SSD. As you can see, we have that i5-9600K, and to tell you the truth, I'm not sure why they use the K variant. In the BIOS, we do have some overclocking settings, or we could always go through the Intel tuning utility if you wanted to, but I'm going to leave it at the stock speed just to see what happens. Plus, I don't think we have much headway with that smaller cooler. 32 gigabytes of DDR4, it's only running at 2400 megahertz. I didn't have 32 gigs at 3200 megahertz, but I think this will work out just fine. And we have that GTX 1650. Now this is a real desktop graphics card, it's a low profile version. It's the MSI model with GDDR5. As for using this as an everyday desktop, I mean, it's going to work out just fine. We have plenty of power for web browsing, 4K video playback, basically whatever you want to do on this machine, you can do it, including gaming and emulation. Here's a quick WebGL test. 500 to 1,000, 30,000, it does dip down a bit. And 20,000 with that GTX 1650 is going to be where it's at, at least with the resolution we're running here, which is 1080p. But yeah, so far I haven't run into any issues, and while I'm running everything here, I'm going to be monitoring the power draw from the wall using a kilowatt meter, and I also have a couple applications running in the background to give me that CPU temp, and so far I haven't seen super high temps on this thing or thermal throttle yet. But the first thing I want to jump into are a couple benchmarks, then we'll get right into some PC gaming. 
With Geekbench 5, I was expecting a little better single core. We got a 1206 and a 5417. Now, multi is looking on par because we only have six cores, no extra threads. But when you compare this to the newer, higher core count Ryzen chips, I mean, this is definitely on the low end. I also ran 3D Mark Firestrike, 7,862, and Time Spy came in with a 3,586. Taking a look at all of this, it seems like in its stock configuration, this 9600K and this mini PC isn't boosting as much or as long as it should. There are ways to fix this in the BIOS, and like I mentioned, you could use Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility, but uh, this is straight out of the box performance here. Now, let's go ahead and see how it handles PC games. First up, Call of Duty Warzone, 1080p with a high normal mix. Looking pretty good. I do get some dips every once in a while. Not below 60, but you know, if I just turn V-Sync on, we'd have a nice smooth experience here at 1080p. But the way it's set up right now, I got an average of 64 FPS out of it. In my experience, GTA 5 always performs really well with this GTX 1650, and this is really no different. We're at 1080p high, and I got an average of 111 FPS. Here's Project Cars 2 with a high-medium mix. I probably could have just jacked it all up to high, but we got an average of 118 FPS out of this, and uh, it does look really good on this little machine. Getting some great performance. And if we take a look at Afterburner up in the top left-hand corner, our CPU is only at 68 degrees Celsius, but we only have 50 to 60% utilization with this game. So I figured we'd jump into something a little harder on the CPU. Here's Cyberpunk 2077. We're at about 80 to 84% utilization on that 9600K, and we only hit a maximum temperature while playing this game of 76 degrees by the end of my run. Not bad at all given the form factor and the size of that cooler. Always like to throw in at least one fighting game. Here we have Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, 1080p, high settings, it's maxed out, we're running at 60. I mean, this GTX 1650 does really well with this game, and basically all fighting games that I've tested. Still, one of my favorite games of all time, Skyrim. This is the special edition version. 1080p high, there's a chance that we could have got ultra out of it, but you know, going in, I just went to the high preset, it still looks great, and it's running at 60. So it can definitely handle PC games as well as a GTX 1650 can. Now it's time to move over to some emulation. And first on the list, we have some original Xbox emulation using CXBX Reloaded. This is Jet Set Radio Future, unfortunately I did have to mute the sound due to the copyrighted music. But this little system handles this emulator really well, and it comes down to this being really optimized for NVIDIA. I've had much better luck with NVIDIA GPUs and CXBX Reloaded. Next up, we have Wii U using the SimU emulator. I did go to 1080p with this game. We're using that Vulcan back end, and it handles this little emulator really well. If you wanted to do something like Breath of the Wild, unfortunately at 1080p, it's kind of hard pressed to hit 60 constantly, but you can always do 30 1080p all day long. And finally on the list, we have some PS3 using RPCS3, Ninja Gaiden Sigma, 1080p, Vulcan back in, awesome performance. I also went through and I tested Skate 3, which is a harder one to emulate. And even though this system only has six cores and no extra threads, it can handle Skate 3 at 720p, 60 FPS, just fine. So with this setup here, it came with a 230 watt power supply. I was actually a little worried that we'd overdo it with that 9600K, but it looks like at idle, we're getting from the wall total system power consumption around 28 watts. While gaming, we average 88. And the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall while maxing out the GPU and all six cores on this little i5, 182 watts. When it comes to average CPU temps, I think they did a pretty decent job choosing this cooler here given the space that they had to work with. Idle, 38 degrees Celsius, average gaming around 68, and in a 10 minute Cinebench R23 test, we did hit 87 degrees Celsius. 
So it's not as bad as I thought it would be, but remember, I was in the vertical position the whole time I was running it. I'm sure these temps would be much higher if you have this laying flat on the desk. It does have a couple feet on it, but those intakes are on the bottom. When it comes to pricing for this unit here, I did pay $710 ship from AliExpress, but you'll see these listed for as low as $433 in different configurations, so you definitely got to make sure you're getting the right CPU and GPU. But overall, for a super small form factor gaming PC, I think it does an amazing job. One thing I'd love to see from these manufacturers is a Ryzen variant of this. I'd love to get 8 cores and 16 threads with even a 4th gen or a 3rd gen Ryzen APU along with this GTX 1650. I think that would be a nice little setup. But unfortunately, as far as I can find online, all of these are Intel. I mean, you can get these with a Xeon, you can get it with an i3 up to an i9. Now, I haven't seen the i9 in a while in this form factor. But an i7 is totally possible to get your hands on. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in picking one of these up or just learning more about it, I will leave a few links in the description. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this little rig, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.